Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to a place that we have been many, many times before, inside this little cell. You may notice, however, things look a little bit different than they have in the past. Not a lot different, but a little bit different. And that's because we are, in fact, playing Dark Souls Remastered. Ooh, ah, yes. It was bound to happen, wasn't it? So what are we doing today? Well, I figured for my first run of Dark Souls Remastered, at least my first run for this channel, uh, we would do what I've been known to do, a challenge run. So the run we're doing today is not a particularly difficult one, but it's a fun one and that's why I decided to do it. It's the Super Male Vitality Run. And hold on, I have to do the thing with the music in the door. <laughs> Love it. So, as you might expect, the run involves upgrading Vitality and upgrading only Vitality. So that means we're going to get through the game, and uh, Vitality is the only stat I can upgrade. Now, I'm not going to say this is like an incredibly easy run, but compared to something like a resistance only run, which I've already done, this should be a walk in the park. Oh, and this. All right. I think the most fun thing about these sorts of runs where you upgrade only one stat is trying to figure out what equipment you can use to fit in with those parameters. And I do more or less have one figured out. But anyways. So if you've never watched one of these runs that I did for my channel before, generally the way it works is I will sort of chop them up so that only the important parts are in here. So you don't get a lot of downtime, like running between areas and stuff. Because I think that's just boring when, you know, you have a bunch of runs of the same game. Which I do. So... Uh, we'll do that. One other thing I forgot to mention, you can kind of tell right here, I'm running an Ultra HD 4K texture pack. You can tell if you can get up real close to that wall or look at the ground. It's not as obvious as you might expect, but it definitely makes stuff look nicer. So, yeah. You probably noticed the Asylum Demon looked a little bit different. That's why. Anyways, let's do the early graveyard run, and then I will be back. Alright, so what shall we level? Uh, well, I'm thinking probably Vitality. Yeah. Alright. So, uh, as we go into the Berg here, because that's the way I'm going to run first, let's discuss Dark Souls Remastered a little bit, because it has become quite the controversial topic, or at least as controversial as something about a video game can be. Oops. And I'm going to say something that I think is going to be an unpopular opinion. In that... Ooh. Good save. In that I think that Dark Souls Remastered is actually the best version of the game and the most enjoyable to play. And now that you've all given a thumbs down and unsubscribed, allow me to elaborate. For me, it all comes down to a, a few things. And don't worry, we'll talk about the negatives as well. But... Uh, the first of these things has definitely got to be frame rate. Even running this Ultra HD 4K uh, texture pack, I am not dipping below 60 frames per second. In fact, even when we go down into Blight Town or Demon Ruins, I will not be dipping below 60 frames per second. And that is certainly not something I could say about Prepare to Die Edition, even with DS Fix. Now, as always, your experience may vary, and I'm sure there's somebody out there who's like, well, I got 120 frames per second in Blight Town using DS Fix, but at the very least, that's certainly not the norm. And to me, that's a big deal. Like I said, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, second one is... 
although they fixed the uh, frame rate, 60 FPS, I was very worried that they weren't going to change the physics so that they matched the new frame rate. And what I mean by that is when you play with DS fix, you have to switch back to 30 frames per second a lot to do certain skips and sequence breaks. However, as you notice there, I was able to do the lower Blight Town skip without switching the frame rate. So they fixed it. In fact, every single skip that I've tried, with the exception of one, uh, has worked. And this includes stuff like the Duke skip, which is probably the most important one. Um, you know, the lower Blight Town skip, obviously this one. And to me, that was one of the most important things, because if these sequence breaks didn't work, that just makes the game a whole heck of a lot less fun, in my opinion. Because when you've done, you know, 700,552 playthroughs of the game like I have, that's an estimate, um, you want to be able to either streamline your... Oh, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> You know, streamline your run, or, you know, try running through in different orders. And uh, that's one of the most important things for me. So, being able to still do that, pretty great. And uh, finally, almost got nailed by that. The third thing is online connectivity. Now, if you ever tried to do a co-op run of Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition, you'd know that's basically impossible. Fortunately, there is Wolf's Connectivity mod, but even that... Uh, do I want to rest there? Yeah, I guess I will, just, just in case. You know, even with Wolf's Connectivity mod, because of the way connections built, you'd have to sit there for about half an hour before you could actually summon each other, and it just was not a pleasant experience. In this one, it's got that uh, password system, just like Dark Souls 3, etc. And it works perfectly. I did a co-op run with somebody, and it was like instant the summon sign would appear. Now there is a little caveat to that in that if you're looking to do PvP uh, you might have a little bit of an issue and we will get into that. But for me it's basically those three things that make this the best version of the game. Uh, without those I definitely would not think it was the best version, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Although we will now get into the negatives about Dark Souls Remastered. And the funny thing is that I think most of the negatives boil down more to uh, business decisions and optics than actual gameplay. So, the first thing has got to be the price. $40 is pretty steep for a game this old, even if it is quote-unquote remastered. I mean, I'm running this HD texture pack and I bet you that if I showed you a side-by-side, -side, it wouldn't even look that different to Prepare to Die Edition. And that's with the HD textures. So, it's not as if they really changed that much to justify the increase in price. The good news, though, is that if you own Prepare to Die Edition, you get a discount, so... That was pretty important. I probably wouldn't have dropped 40 bucks on this at full price. I probably would have waited for a sale. And then uh, probably the worst thing is that you combine that, that higher price, with the fact that they then took Prepare to Die Edition off the market. I think that is probably the worst thing in all of this that they did. So people that didn't already own Prepare to Die Edition can no longer purchase it. And this is the same sort of logic behind, you know, 
making Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare or the original Call of Duty still 20 bucks in the Steam store, it's because they want you to buy the new one. As I guarantee you, there would be a lot of people that would look at that and go, yeah, I'm just going to buy the prepared ed edition for 5 bucks on sale. So that's pretty scummy. Especially when you consider that there are a lot of mods that only work for a prepared to die edition. I don't think I can even wield that, can I? Nope. Unless I two-hand it in my right hand. So yeah, that's pretty crappy. And notice jumping over that still works. Oh, by the way, before I keep going, I, I did want to share a little discovery that I made. Um, you will see that in the options, uh, there's no option for L3 to jump. But you can actually do L3 to jump. You just have to go into your keys. And uh, when you go down to jump, you can set it to L3, which means you can tap away at that B button and never have to worry about accidentally jumping and taking counter damage. Nice, large Titanite. That's what I need when I get my new weapon, which I already know what it's going to be. I was just kind of going along on autopilot. Uh, I guess we'll go kill Taurus Demon. Yeah, that, that's fine, because my weapon is close by. So anyways, that... Um, perhaps the biggest negatives all revolve around that sort of thing. Just business decisions and optics. It, it's not a good look, is it? When uh, they do something like that. There are a couple minor nitpicks. One of them is that I really don't like how your uh, new items don't automatically go to your bar. And I think that most people probably disliked that feature. But it could have very easily been an option that you could toggle yes or no. Since they went through the trouble of changing it. Oh, should we... Nah, whatever. I was going to do the drop attack to kill him, but this is fast enough already. So yeah, that's pretty annoying. And then the other thing that would have been a super easy inclusion that they didn't do was there is no how many souls you need to level up from your status menu. Which again is pretty crappy because that would have been a very easy thing to add. And the final negative... has definitely got to be the online component. Now I put it in the positives, but it also kind of goes in the negatives because nobody is playing. And there are a few reasons for that, really, I think. Um, The thing is, I don't think you can expect people that started with Dark Souls 3 to come back to Dark Souls 1 and fall in love with it. Because although to me this is definitely the best of all the games and uh, the one that I play the most, it definitely feels a little bit janky in a lot of ways compared to the newer ones. And then you combine that with the fact that People that bought the remaster and have already put 900 hours into Prepare to Die Edition probably going to look at it and go, eh, there's not really enough new to uh, keep me going on it. Let's just go up to 20 for now. I'll save the rest of my souls. Um... Okay, let's go back. So that that's what I what I think about that, why the uh, 
the online component is dead. So if you're looking to invade people or do PvP, probably not going to happen. But honestly, in my opinion, having gone back and done a little bit of it, I don't think that the PvP in Dark Souls 1 is actually very good. So that's not that big a loss for me. You know, stuff like, and I guess this goes to another negative in terms of stuff they could have fixed. Uh, chain backstabbing is still a thing, so you can easily do that and just auto-kill somebody. Um, they probably could have made it where you could roll in different directions while locked on, or run in different directions while locked on, rather. These probably would have been relatively easy things to do that would have made the game feel a lot more fresh. Okay. Anyways, we're going this way. Second pine resin is going to be used here. Now I should actually have enough HP to survive a, a partial parry, but I'm not going to test that. Tell you for the like a starter weapon. Oh, I hate that one. It's not like it's that hard to parry, but it scares me, so I will always just dodge out of the way instead and go for a backstab. But anyways, that's basically what I had to say about Dark Souls Remaster. So now that we've done this giant section with no edits, uh, let's go back and do some more editing. <laughs> Get dabbed on. Alright, moving on. Oh, uh, feel free, of course, to leave your opinions on Dark Souls Remastered in the comments. Or hate mail, or, or whatever. Anyways, moving on. Alright, I messed up the original run of this. Let's try again. There we go. I got him in a slightly wrong position before, and so completely messed it up. Ah, That makes me a little bit sad because I will never be able to wield that in this run. <laughs> oh, by the way, I didn't mention. You might have spotted it. My new weapon is going to be the Claymore. The great thing about the Claymore is that I can just barely two-hand it at 11 strength. One of the reasons I chose Knight. Um, so there's that. Don't need sunlight medals, so I'm not going to bother. Law truck. Okay, they didn't do their jumpy thing. Alright, I still made it out. Normally, you know, you wait for the jump, and then you block it, and then you run past. And that will get you the timing to get through that door, but... Okay, whatever. Not complaining. Still made it, so. Uh, I think we'll save the last gold pine resin for a quillog, so I'll just do this normally. But plus five anyway, so. Yeah, pretty sure I'm going to be okay. Whoops. Or maybe not. Who knows? I gotta say, uh, some people are playing because I've been hearing a lot of bells going off. The fire in uh, particle effects, by the way, are an area where the game definitely does look nicer. You'll especially see when we get to Quilog. Like, if she does her explosion, it looks a lot better.
Easy peasy. Oh, you know what we could do? Yeah, we're gonna do that. Hold that thought. <laughs> Let's go ring this bell first. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and gather a bunch of large Titanite, and we're gonna do that by utilizing my favorite skip in the entire game. And one that I was very surprised still worked in uh, the remaster. And this is the Sen's Gate skip. Alright, so what we do is we're going to get this guy to run towards us, and we're going to count one, two, three, so third pillar. The one on the very bottom does count towards that total. We want to get this guy right up in the corner there. Right about there. Carry him. And repost. So, you'll notice the camera is now completely jacked up, as are the controls. Everything is totally messed up. And what's happened here is when I did the parry and the riposte, it pushed me slightly outside the uh, walkway. Not enough to kill me, but just enough to uh, make the game think that I was dead. And what that did is trigger the death camera, where the camera goes overhead as if you had fallen. Now the reason that we do this is because this will actually unload assets. Which means that when I go over here, there's no gate in front of Sense Fortress. So if I quit... And I accept the end user license agreement. And then I click continue. I am now inside the Sin's Fortress gate. Pretty cool, huh? There's actually a similar trick um, in Dark Souls 3, the Farron Skip, which involves using the same exact mechanic. Now there's uh, a little bit of a danger in doing this, because if you die in here, you have to do the skip again as the gate is still going to be closed. And uh, it's a little bit risky in that case because it's very possible that... whoops. As I was saying. Okay, good to go. So the danger if you do die in there and you have to do the, the trick again, is that if you stand a little bit too close to the edge, it will actually push you all the way out and you will die. So, definitely could have lost my souls there, which would have been very sad. And honestly, probably would have been a restart at that point. Alright, so with the two large titanite that I got from the crystal lizard and the rest of the large titanite in here, I should have enough. And if not, I can just buy the rest. Alright, so we got a couple large titanite over here. Couple over here. There's the possibility of getting a drop from this guy. I don't know who just died, but somebody did.
Aren't you gonna try and drink? Nice, so that puts me at nine, which is the exact amount that I need. So I figured I would show another kind of neat trick that you can do here. Quite useful if you come down here really early and are just looking to get the large ember. Alright, what we're going to do is equip a bow. So I picked up this bow in uh, Dark Root Garden. And picked up these black fire bombs in the berg. We're going to go right in this corner here. And you're going to aim for the fourth of these little gaps. So one, two, three, four. And chuck some fire bombs. Hmm. One, two, three, four. Now you should be able to chuck two before you have to reset. One, two, three, four. Go a little high this time because I'm trying to hit the dog, actually. There we go. That's the main uh, main benefit of doing this. And then you can throw on the regular fire bombs too and do it. You should have enough if you grab the fire bombs from out of Firelink and then uh, grab the black fire bombs from the Berg. Oh, whoops. <laughs> And one thing that's cool is, actually, if we were to run into the boss fight now, he'll still be at that health, so you don't have to kill him completely. See? <laughs> so even if you don't quite have enough firebombs to kill him completely, you can weaken him enough that it'll be really easy to go in and just get a couple more hits on him. The main benefit of that though is just killing that second dog. In fact I would almost advise to do that every time <laughs> just until you kill the dog and then run through the door because really the only difficulty in that fight is from the dogs. Ah, uh, do I need to go up here at all? Uh, we'll do it anyway I guess. So I was debating whether or not I was going to go all the way and kill Gaping Dragon, but I don't think I'm going to. You'll notice that works. You had to go to 30 FPS to get that to work in uh, Prepare to Die Edition. However, I have forgotten that I wanted to kill Kirk, so I'm not human, which means we'll just have to come back later. Alright, large ember acquired. Uh, the other thing I need to do while I'm down here is talk to Laurentius. Another great thing about night, you start with hello. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Not that. Okay. So you do start with one attunement slot, which means that I can use power within, which will be awesome. Yes, yes you. Alright. And now just for fun, I'll go drop down on the giant rat and kill it. Not quite a one-shot. If I'd done the jump, it might have gotten a double hit. I can't remember if it does that or not. I think we're good then, yeah? Alrighty. Magnificent. And ten. Uh, and ten. Here we go. Go get yourself. 
While I'm here, I guess I should go ahead and do this. And I guess I can just pop these. I don't think I really need them for anything. By the way, it still does the thing where if you go into your menu, it'll kick you out once the soul gets used. So that's kind of annoying. So you gotta wait till right after the soul is popped. Oh, by the way, apparently the uh, the frame perfect dupe glitch still works. I haven't really tried it, but I imagine it would be twice as hard because it's at 60 frames instead of 30. So you'd have to be twice as precise, essentially. Uh, anyways, what now? Uh, I think we're gonna go down into Blighttown.